So hey guys, uh, today we have Sanidhi Gupta and he is having three years of experience in Java and Spring Boot. And guys, please subscribe this channel if you want to prepare for your interviews. So let's get started. Hey, hi Sanidhi, how are you? Yeah, hi Ali, I'm good. And what about you? Yes, I'm also good. Shall we start? Yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. Uh, can you please tell me about yourself and your recent project? Yeah, myself Gupta Sanidhi. Currently, I'm, uh, mm -hmm. I'm working in an I'm MNC organization. Mm -hmm. mm, I had around 3.3 years of experience in working with this organization. During this duration, I had done two different projects. One is related to financial services and, and the other one is related to hospitality domain. The current one is hospitality domain, which is like a restaurant management application, which holds and maintains uh, around 1900 plus restaurants in the US region. Mm -hmm. Mm, we are okay. developing a products and many things to that particular application from end to end okay. okay for managing ordering and inventory management and other things okay okay so uh uh which logging tools you are using we are using slf 4 j logging tool slf 4 j logging tools how did you integrate that yeah, by adding the uh, logging dependency, logging dependency into the form.xml file. And all, all. Okay, okay. So before moving to further questions, I heard you recently took our interview preparation kit. So was it helpful or what? I You just told me that you took this. You yeah, it's definitely helping me in cracking the interview. I recently got placed in an uh, organization where the interview kit helped me really well. Oh, uh, nice. I was not able to find all the questions. Mm -hmm. in, in, in one place yeah 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 so this contains yeah. all yeah, yeah go ahead yeah it contains all the questions that the interviewer asked mm -hmm. and it needs some more questions um, we cannot predict the questions that are asked by the interview right so mm -hmm. it covers most of the questions so everything was the there okay, yeah okay. and projects are also there if someone is not is on bench or yeah. is there working yeah, on we some can testing things place the projects can... in our resume too. they can add those projects in your in their resume and chat support by going also. through the pro mm. by going through the project description we can mention or describe our project about yeah, yeah, yeah. what to mention what not to mention in the project description uh, okay. those will help me very well okay okay so i am very happy uh, to hurt this like you crack your technical interviews and yes i am very happy okay i am providing the link of interview preparation kit below in the description please go and check it out now so moving ahead uh, moving to our questions uh, which DB are you using and how did you connect uh, with that DB? In our project, we are using two different databases. One is RDBMS okay. and one NoSQL database. No SQL database. Okay. I had worked on RDBMS, which is mm -hmm. MySQL database. Okay. Uh, we integrate that with the providing starter dependencies, Spring Data JPA okay. and MySQL connector. We okay. connect the database with the properties. Mm -hmm application.yaml file mm -hmm. using the Spring Data Source connections. Okay. Okay. So, uh, moving ahead, uh, what is a Spring Boot dependency management? Yeah, Spring Boot dependency, uh, Spring Boot dependency management includes, uh, which, provides, uh, which provides a starter parent dependency where mm -hmm. the group of smaller dependencies are merged mm -hmm. into a single dependency to provide a single functionality. Uh, mm -hmm. Consider a Spring Data, not Spring Data, Spring Web, which provides mm -hmm. uh, many dependencies which are used to develop a RESTful web application. Okay. The Spring Boot starter dependency itself, the dependency management, whenever there are dependencies inside a form.xml file, it mm -hmm. will update, it will get the latest versions of the dependencies that are available in the application. Okay, okay. okay. Got it. So, is it possible to change the port of uh, the embedded Tomcat server in Spring Boot application? Yeah, by with the help of uh, application.yaml file, mm -hmm. by changing the server port, we can change mm -hmm. the port of the application. Okay. 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 What happens if a starter dependency includes conflicting versions of libraries with other dependencies in the project? Mm -hmm. uh, let's say we have uh, multiple dependencies in our POM file. Okay. Uh, okay. As you know, uh, with our Spring Boot starter, dependencies uh, version should be matched. Uh, yeah. We cannot lower or upgrade the version as per our uh, Spring Boot starter version. So what if there is a conflict uh, versions of the libraries with other dependencies? 
first of all it will uh, the project will not load itself okay um, and so how will you overcome this with the help of maven i think so okay yeah i think we need manual intervention to resolve this version uh, dependencies need to add some you see to hard version related things uh, one row inside the dependency something like that uh, mm -hmm. yeah okay so what's the default port of tomcat in spring boot 8080 80 can we replace this yes we can replace okay can we disable the default web server in a spring boot application mm. yes we can disable and we can update the apps so how, how will you disable how will you disable mm, using the application file we can disable application.yaml file we can disable the tomcat server i'm to tomcat server okay in uh application yaml file or pom file mm. we need to exclude something yeah yes in the application dot pom dot xml file we have to uh, in the exclude properties that uh, then that place we have to exclude mm. the correct Tom correct correct so we can disable the default web server in spring boot application by uh, setting some like uh, application type none spring dot main dot web application type and type is equal to none in properties file okay yeah yeah in the configuration okay. side, we have to do that from pom.xml, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. not, not, not in pom.xml, in application YAML or properties file. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. So, how to disable a specific auto configuration class? By excluding the configuration. Right? Okay. Uh, excluding, how will you exclude? In the main application with the configuration we have to exclude what are the configuration files that need to okay. yes, exclude equal to the files that have so have you heard it. about have you heard about exclude attributes uh inside the enable auto configuration yeah in that only we have to update uh, the configuration files that we don't mm. want to mm. configure correct 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 okay uh, can you tell me the difference between REST controller and controller? Yeah, REST controller is a combination of controller and response body. REST controller is used for mm -hmm. um, applications which are returning JSON data type. But for controller, we are using for that for uh, applications, uh, APIs that are okay. returning the response in so, HTML format. Okay, so REST controller returns JSON type only? It can return... Can it return XML? Yes, I am having XML that, format. But... Yeah, I think we can return XML format as well. Okay. 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 I haven't no tried it manually, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no worries. That's fine. Uh, moving ahead, can you tell me the difference between request mapping and get mapping? Request mapping and get mapping, we can replace that with the. Get map, we can replace the get mapping with request mm. mapping where mm. it is the we can use the request mapping as the base URL for the entire controller class. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, okay. Uh, where should we use re request mapping and get mapping? I mean, can you tell me some uh, 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 example? Can you share some example of mm. the real API? Okay. Uh, you know, consider your project like uh, mm. it is like a restaurant. Okay. Uh, the, the different services are having different get APIs. Mm -hmm. And the main request mapping in the request mapping, we can use the restaurant name as the request mm -hmm. map URL. Mm -hmm. And the particular uh, method, we can use the get method. That okay. particular service method, like uh, inventory, like kitchen, mm -hmm. like order, we can use okay, that for okay. different. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Uh, uh, can you tell me the difference between war and embedded containers? War and embedded containers? Embedded containers. Okay, so basically, a traditional war uh, requires uh, 
external server like Tomcat or JBox while uh, embedded containers, uh, while Spring Boot with an embedded container bundles, the server within the application. I mean, we don't need okay, to okay, require an external server. So that's a difference. Okay. okay, as you had uh, added ORM, that's why I was worried. Uh, is it Hibernate related or is it uh, related to Tomcat? So that's why I was not able to recall. Yeah, yeah, no worries. That is fine. Uh, can we check the environment properties in our Spring Boot application? Environment properties? We have to define the environment properties through the uh, run configuration of the application mm. with the help of. No, it is not possible to check that. Uh, how? I mean, why? Because environment properties are used to define or run the application with particular configurations. We cannot. Mm -hmm. Okay, we so cannot can we use? The... Can we can also use the environment? Uh, as a, I mean, we can auto wire the environment class, right? Uh, in our. Uh, yeah, which can, from the application YAML file. Okay. Uh, there is a method get property, I think. Remember? Yes, there are three types of uh, injecting mm -hmm. the environment variables. One is with the value, uh, and there is with method, and another one was not again. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, moving ahead. Uh, can you explain uh, the need of dev tool dependency? Pardon? Uh, de have you heard about dev tool dependency? Yeah, okay. Dev tool, yeah. uh, which will reload the application in the lesser time. Lesser. If there are, uh, whenever mm -hmm. these uh, dependencies added into the application, mm -hmm. the reloading time of the application will drastically reduce because okay. it will only do the updated changes. If the updated changes are more, then it will do the uh, entire application rebuild. Okay, okay. Okay, got it. Uh, okay, moving ahead. Uh, how do you test a Spring Boot application? Uh, you, we are using how do you uh, test it, unit testing? Yeah, yeah, unit testing. Can you uh, share us steps? Uh, how what steps you follow uh, from the scratch? Okay, for testing mm. a Spring Boot application, we are use the application. If the application is of three tier architecture, there mm -hmm. are three different layers. Mm -hmm. One is controller layer, service layer, okay. and repository okay. layer. We have to test the three these three different mm -hmm. three services. Mm -hmm. mm, when it comes to controller, uh, we have to use at the rate test, 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 test mm -hmm. for repository and services. We mm -hmm. can define at the rate test. Okay. Mm. Whenever there are some dependencies to mm -hmm. run this application, like mm -hmm. services is depend on service application is dependent on term. repository. We cannot directly use the database connections in this when during testing. So we are using hyper. H2 database internal in memory okay. H2 database for uh, during testing. Okay. Okay. All so right. we can mock these dependencies with the help of mock it. So, okay. Okay. So what's the purpose of unit testing in our uh, software development uh, uh, things area? Okay. Unit testing defines the to test the particular block of code with all the exact scenarios. Mm -hmm. Um, if the particular operation is like addition operation, we can mm -hmm. perform we can provide different values whether the output is correct or not with the expected okay. and actual values. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's the coverage rule in your project? Uh code coverage rule. Do you have any mm -hmm. code coverage? It was ninety percent minimum. Ninety percent. So you always maintain nineteen ninety percent. Yes, definitely. Mm, okay. Uh, what's the role of Spring Boot test annotation? Spring Boot test provides starter dependencies for uh, started Spring Boot test provides starter dependencies for JUnit, Mockito, mm -hmm. JMeter, okay. and JBoss for okay. entire application. We don't mm -hmm. need to mention the dependencies for JUnit and Mockito, which are mm -hmm. all embedded into a starter test dependency. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, got it. Uh, can you explain the purpose of POM XML file in our Maven project? Okay, POM XML file contains all mm. the dependencies and configurations for okay. the application to run. Okay. During the application startup itself, uh, mm -hmm. it will load all the configurations from the mm -hmm. POM XML file. So mm -hmm. it is mandatory to have an XML file when building an application. Mm, okay, good, good. Uh, moving ahead. Uh, 
what servers are provided by Spring Boot application and which one is default? Mm, it provides uh, Tomcat and JT. Um, by Okay. the the default um, server is Tomcat. We can update the server to JT also by disabling the Tomcat and enabling the JT server dependency in the XML file. Okay. So can you explain the component scan and bean annotation? Okay, component scan is used to scan the beans. Mm -hmm. Component scan is used to scan all the components which are available in the particular project Mm -hmm. during the application startup. Uh, at the rate, bean is used for particularly creating a bean. Mm -hmm. mm, those are described in configuration classes. Mm -hmm. We are just like when it comes to security, there are several methods which we want to create the bean explicitly. For that, we are we can use at the rate bean. Mm. Okay, okay, all right. So, how can you programmatically determine which profiles are currently active in a Spring Boot application? Uh, there are there we may have multiple profiles, right? Uh, in a Spring Hmm. Yeah, Boot application. they will give you a seat and Mm. So, how can we identify which one is uh, currently active? So there is a get active profiles method in the environment object. So we can find from that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how to enable uh, debugging log in Spring Boot application? Uh, like, have you uh, wrote some? Log dot debug, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, when up. Yeah, there I are mean, several now. Several. logging dot label dot rule is equal to debug. Okay. There are several levels in debug. Uh, logging one is one. Yeah, one error debug trace. Another thing. By default, uh, error debug. By default, error info. And one are by default enabled. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. What's the purpose of having a Spring Boot starter parent? You know, Startup parent, which provides, uh, which updates all the starter dependencies that are available to the up to date versions which are okay. used in the dependencies. Okay. Yes, along with those, uh, that uh, it also include default plugin configuration, resource filtering, dependency management, etc, etc. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what are the best, uh, what are the rest API best practices? Like what you follow in your project? What are their best practices? Okay. Mm. Mm. Uh, there are best practices like uh, versioning with the particular version is causing any problems. We have to do provide another version, and it was it does not store any information. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Uh, like there should be proper HTTP methods. There should be proper Okay, proper HTTP methods. status code, like 200 the plus headers success. So, do you know uh, what's the status code for delete if it is successfully deleted? Uh, let's say we you have... can provide 200 okay Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. And what about for uh, four? uh, four series is related to client uh, server side errors which are 400 internal server error force if the data is not found we can return 404 Uh, four zero four. Correct, correct. Okay, and uh, have you worked on multi-threaded environment? Uh, Mm, I had worked some, I haven't worked that much on multi threat environment. mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no worries. I am aware of the multi threaded application where we So, can use the. can you brief on this? Like, what these multi-threading applications do and Why do we use multi-threaded environment in a few of our requirements? Okay, if, if the particular block or any method contains local variables. The multi threaded, in, if we use that in a multi threaded environment, it may change the value without knowing Mm. Mm. the other thread. So, when it comes to synchronized block, only, only the one thread at a time is going to access and update that particular value. Okay. So, Okay. Okay, okay. Can you tell me the uh, few best practices when you apply collections in your project? What things you consider?
Who will consider whether uh, when it comes to a list, whether to if there are particular uh, if the usage is about more retrievals and more mm -hmm. if the usage is to get more retrievals, then we are using array list. If the updations mm -hmm. under the based on the time complexity, we are using okay. different collections. Okay, okay, okay. So have you have you ever uh, tested a static method? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, but uh, do you know how do we how can we test the static method? Okay, so it can be done by calling them directly in our test cases. We don't need to create an object. Just the simple uh, static things. Okay, with the help of class name, we can directly call yeah, that. Direct. I think you already uh, knew this, but you were not recalling. No worries. Uh, Moving ahead, uh, what is the interface and in, in Java and why do we, uh, why do you use if uh, it you cannot write anything concrete on it? Interface is uh, interface is useful for providing abstraction. Abstraction is like uh, only showing mm -hmm. the particular functionality without showing all the implementation okay. or internal details. Uh, okay. With the help of interface, we can achieve hundred percent abstraction. There are also uh -huh. abstract class like which is also provides abstraction, but not that much. With the help of interfaces, we can provide hundred percent abstraction. Okay, so why uh, multiple uh, inheritance is not possible, and how interface uh, solve this problem? Okay, multiple. Inheritance is like uh, if you uh, consider a class is A, B, C, mm -hmm. uh, both class A and class B having a same method. If the okay. class C uh, extends that both classes, mm -hmm. um, if class, class A, um, when we call a method, uh, the same method from the class C, there mm -hmm. will be an ambiguity which method to call from the class C. This will okay. cause a diamond error problem. Okay. We can eliminate this by using interfaces. Yes, interface mm -hmm. only contains the method definition so we can call our own method and we'll provide our own implementation for that method okay okay uh okay and uh, uh what's the difference between abstract class and interface yeah if they, even if there is any abstract method in the particular class then mm -hmm. the class must need to be defined as abstract uh, abstract class okay Okay, when it comes to interface, all the methods in the interface are by default abstract. We don't need to provide any abstract keyword in the interface. Mm -hmm. From Java onwards, it the functional inter the interface can contains both default and static methods. Mm -hmm. The only difference between abstract class and interface is like we can create constructor for abstract class, but we cannot create a, for the interface. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, have you ever used design pattern in your project? Any design pattern? Yeah, I'm aware of singleton design pattern. Okay, so where you have used and why? Uh, no project we have used in current scenario. They are, the market is like saying about it is an anti-pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was not aware why it was called it anti-pattern, but whenever there was a single instance needed for the entire application, Without okay. creating any other instance, at that time we had used singleton design pattern. Okay. Can you explain Liskov substitution principle? Liskov substitution principle is uh, of parent and child relationship. If the uh, the child can be replaced by the parent can be replaced by child. Uh -huh. Yeah. So okay. So the method, uh, the methods or any other things that are extended from a one class to another class, then mm -hmm. we can replace the subclass with the parent class, okay, not okay. parent class with the subclass. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, can you tell me which one is better constructor injection or setter injection? Yeah. Constructor injection is better. Why? In... Mm -hmm. There will be only single constructor in single constructor is available. Who can yeah, okay. There will be only single constructor available with mm -hmm. all the methods in a particular mm -hmm. application. Mm -hmm. When it comes to certain method, uh, certain injection, mm 
we have to manually write right okay so <clears throat> uh, constructor injection is better because uh, it allows for immutability and ensures that all the dependencies are set before the object is used uh, whereas setter injection uh, i mean i think cannot do these things and cannot provide some better things okay moving ahead uh, uh, one second so uh, what what is a static keyword static keyword which provides a single instance for all the uh, for uh, yeah it provides or returns only single instance okay okay can a static block throw an exception Yes, it throws uh, checked exceptions. Uh, okay. Okay. It is. It depends on versions, or it throw. It can throw in every Java version. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you override static methods in Java? Yeah. You can order static methods in Java, but if there are same methods in the static methods, right? Or static mm. blocks? Okay, static methods. Are you sure? Like we can override okay. the set. Okay, okay. You are saying about static methods, right? We cannot mm. order static methods, but we can overload static methods. Mm. Yes, yes, correct. Uh, correct, correct. Uh, and what about final keyword? Uh, what is this final keyword? Okay, we can uh, use the final keyword for classes, variables. And methods, mm -hmm. but whenever we are using final keyword for a class, no mm -hmm. other class can extend this class. Mm -hmm. For variable, it will be only single instance will be available, okay. and we cannot change the variable value if the variable is of type final for particular okay. method. If we had applied, okay, can we cannot override. Right? Okay, okay. Can can we modify a final object reference in Java? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we cannot change the reference of the final object once it has been assigned. Uh, meaning we cannot make it uh, a point to different object. However, we can still uh, modify the object's internal state if it is mutable. Okay. Okay, so what's the impact of declaring a method as final on inheritance? Okay, the, sub the classes that are implementing that interface cannot... Ex mm. uh, Override that method. Cannot implement or override that method. Mm. Okay. Okay. Correct. Correct. Uh, moving ahead. So, how do you handle exceptions in your project? Mm. By providing custom exceptions with a mm -hmm. with a global exception handler mm -hmm. and the exception handler. Okay. What? Uh, strategies you use majorly for uh, like you said you handle global uh, through global exception or uh... yeah okay there was a separate package called uh, exception handler we provide all the exceptions mm -hmm. uh, with the help of global exception handler we will annotate that with the uh, that controller address where whenever an exception is thrown in the entire application it will first check whether the application exception is defined mm -hmm. in the controller global exception handler or not if it is defined okay. then it will throw from the point of okay okay uh, can you uh, share some custom exception names that you guys are throwing in your current project okay whenever uh, the order was finding if the mm -hmm. order is not able to find then okay. we can throw order id order with id not found okay. exception mm -hmm. when the user okay. was not any not an exception. When the particular user wants to search for a particular item, then mm -hmm. we can throw particular item was not found exception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. These are unchecked exceptions, and we have to extend this by runtime mm -hmm. exception. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Mm, moving ahead. Mm, do you know about uh, uh, Java memory model? Yeah, I'm. Can you uh, please give a brief on this? 
ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जावा मेमोरी इज ए इट प्रोवाइड्स इन नेगेटिव मेमोरी फॉर ऑल द इंस्टेंसेस एंड अदर थिंग इट प्रोवाइड्स कीप मेमोरी फॉर स्टोरिंग ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड फॉर स्टोरिंग ऑब्जेक्ट्स अरेज एंड स्ट्रिंग्स एंड देयर वाज अ मेमोरी कॉल्ड स्टैक व्हिच इज यूज्ड फॉर स्टोरिंग लोकल वेरिएबल्स एंड रेफरेंस वेरिएबल्स स्टैक कंटेंट्स ए फॉर एवरी मेथड और फॉर एवरी थ्रेड देयर विल बी अ सेपरेट स्टैक क्रिएटेड इन द uh stack space and there was a new space which is introduced in java it as a part of memory management to enhance the memory it is mm-hmm. like parent previously called parent now it is called as meta space uh, okay. it is used to hold static variables methods static okay. blocks and class structures okay okay got it okay so moving to some coding questions uh i would ask you some coding questions you don't need to uh, write them just uh, tell your approach here verbally okay? okay so first question is uh, if you are given an array of integers and your task is to remove uh, the duplicate elements and make the array uh, containing uh, unique uh, unique numbers uh, so how will you do that in java hmm Uh, I will. You can use uh, two for loops for comparing the first element with the second element, and if it is found, okay. then we have to make it zero. Yeah, we have to make it zero or null. So in that way, we can update okay. the value. Cannot we use map? Like, can we store uh, the key and which we uh, and in the value? Uh, can we store how many yeah, times? Yeah, we got it. As you had said, different as mm-hmm. array. So that's why I am using basic Java when it comes to how mm-hmm. uh, we can make that as an array list with the help mm-hmm. of array. And in mm-hmm. the there are several methods in array list. Dot mm-hmm. distinct in that methods we can use. Okay. If it is of type key and value pair, we can use hash map to define this. Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, how do you sort? Uh, let's say you are asked to. write any program and that program required a sorting array so how how would you sort that thing in java you can uh, like what approach do you generally use okay collections provide particular methods like in the collections framework it provides two different like comparable and comparator interface comparable mm-hmm. and comparator methods which is which provides comparing based on the comparable is for single sorting sequence and comparator is for sorting multiple sequences mm-hmm. we can use them in the collectors dot sort method to compare Collector the particular sort objects sort. so do you know uh, internally collector sort uses uh, which algorithm mm. so compare compare uh, so, it uses two pointer approach or fast and mm, slow no no it's i it's using a uh, something modified version of quick sort some pivot something related to that okay, okay. yeah yeah and uh, now moving to the next question uh so uh, how do you how will you uh, find whether a number is prime or not in the fastest way in the best approach what would be your best approach mm-hmm. you will start a loop from 2 till the number and check whether it is okay if it is divisible by 0 or it's a, if it is divisible by itself or 1 or not so that way we can check but i was mm. thinking for a faster approach using java that's the only approach i may wear okay so first approach is uh, we will iterate a loop from 2 till the number uh, and check whether it is divisible by that number or not if it mm-hmm. is then it's not a prime if it is not divisible by any number between that range then it's a prime number so this is the first way of doing this program the second yes. way is we will iterate the loop from 2 but not till the actual number we will iterate till uh, let's say we have a number n and we have to find whether it's a prime or not so we will iterate loop from 2 till n by 2 not n n by 2 and the third mm-hmm. approach would be uh, we will start from 2 but we will not go until n by 2 we will go under root n till under root n okay yeah then also we can find whether a number is uh, prime or not okay 
ya mungkin kok Okay, so uh, uh, yes, it's uh, done from my end. Uh